Okay, this will be something fun, something different from my channel. You see, I am constantly looking for uh, items that I can sell in my art booth, art market, stuff like that, that are impulse buys, stuff under 20 bucks that'll grab people's attention. Maybe on their way out after buying two, three hundred dollars worth of items, they'll throw this in on the ticket. Uh, I think I have something here that might fit the bill. You know, something that I don't have to spend much money on, much time on, but will get that impulse purchase. And for those of y'all that don't sell at art markets, hey, this might be something that you could batch out for the grandkids at the holidays or something like that. I've seen these little things, those little brain ticklers. <laughs> well, imagine if I could add some inconsequential value to this that won't cost me too much time or I could just use up scraps. And these things right here, I found that you can buy them for about three bucks each. So, you know, add a little value to that one, maybe I could sell it for a little under 20 bucks. Who knows? But for this video, I'm going to kind of work through the process of seeing what I can do with this one, and y'all can leave down in the comments all the mistakes I've been doing, or what you would do differently. So take, let's take a look at what we got. Again, I just got these in the mail. Uh, bought them online, they were $12 per pack, which means that I got them for basically $3 each. And I did pick the cheapest ones I could find, I don't know about this idea yet. Uh, looks like it's just a cheap piece of aluminum. It appears to be right under three eighths of an inch, which means I could just drill a three eighths inch hole in some kind of piece of wood to make a handle, and the uh, you know five minute epoxy would take up the difference. But be nice if I could just take this off and just use whatever's underneath it to make an even smaller hole or maybe even something a little bit shorter because you don't need that much material into a handle for this little device. The question is how to get it off. Let me grab a purple one because purple's ugly. Can you just pull them off? <sighs> Doesn't look like it. I wonder if how do you think those went on? Looks like it's got a little rivet here. I wonder if it's just the wires and they press that in to attach it. Maybe if I cut this in half, we can find out. Well, it looks like they're pretty hollow and they just have wires coming down to about right there. So I could basically cut that off and I just have to drill a three inch a hole into something to epoxy this in. So that's our solution right there. So, let's go make some handles. For the test one, I'm just gonna be using what I have. I make, I use these little six quarter uh, by six quarter square, square tubes all the time in three or four different project products I make. So let's just use that up to see if this is gonna work or how well it's gonna work. Now the first thing we need to do is uh, drill a hole, uh, okay. If I was to do a lot of these, I would make something like this right here. This is what uh, a pre-drilling hole I do for a lot of boxes and stuff like that. Because I can turn this on and I don't even have to grab anything else. Just push in with this tool right here. But it looks like that one's a quarter inch. So let me chuck up a 3 8 inch and we'll drill a hole real quick. Now when you're going to drill a hole with the lathe, be sure to turn the speed way down. You don't want to burn up your uh, bit, and you're also going to want to hold this. Even though it's in the, in the tailstock quite hard, uh, they do t tend to sometimes uh, come a little bit loose. I also will take the, the lock, and I won't totally loosen it up. I'll, I'll just kind of get it unsnug, just enough so it will move. Because if you totally unslug it, there is going to be a little slop right here. And then just advance it in until you reach the spot where you go, want to. So I'm just gonna go in maybe an inch. If you're going in much farther than an inch, go in, come out, go in, come out, so you clear away the waste. And word to the wise, don't leave your drill in here because invariably you're gonna hit your elbow on it. So this is gonna be spindle turning. So the tools I am most likely to use are going to be a spindle gouge, a skew, and just to make it round, my spindle roughing gouge. First things first, let's go ahead and make this thing round. Now 
Now I'm going to square up the end. It looks square, but I'm not 100% sure, so I'm going to just kind of scrape it down, then clean it up. Next, I'm kind of looking at this one, and I think the transition I want into this is a, a bead. You could do a cove and would kind of hug that right there, but I don't know why. I think a bead, because these are kind of revert inside a little bit, it'll cover up that lip from this a little nicer. So maybe we won't see the purple or the other color, anodized colors. So I'm just going to do a quick bead after I get rid of the material. And I'll do that with my spindle roughing gouge. Just a couple swipes. One, two. I don't want to go all the way to the hole. I want that little bit of an edge right there. Now the thing is, if you do a bead, it always looks good with a cove right after it. So let's just kind of work a cove in right here. If you go down one side, you always have to come back the other. Now I'll work on the handle portion. Now my fingers are about that far. We don't really need it to be the whole handle. So I'll just do a little mini handle right here and I'll have that be the end. So I'm just gonna waste away a little material. We'll roll into it. Now see how these two ledges are even? I don't like that look. I don't like things being level on my spindle. So I'm just going to roll this over a little bit so it's a little bit lower than where it starts out at. So now that the dip comes over here, that also creates a little high spot right there that I can transition to over to the rest of the handle. A little flat right there, so I'll just bring it back a little bit farther. How about we transition to a ball on the end? A cove that matches up. Transition to a small bead. Then a little ball. Eh, how about instead of a ball, we do like a chess piece. There we go. Now this would be the time to do any kind of sanding if you want to. I'm just going to go straight to, let's say, 320. Eh, I'll go down to 240. Got a little bit of shaping to do at the bottom of that. Now when coves like this right here, a lot of times what I would do is I'll take my sandpaper and I'll grab one of my whammy bars, I'll wrap it around the whammy bar, and that'll allow me to get on the inside without rounding over these sharp corners, which I like so much. And if you sand one direction, remember, you always have to sand the other direction too. And I typically stop at 320. Not really sense to go for too much further than that. For a finish, I'll grab, generally grab Mahoney's and my rag right here that's just totally infused with beeswax and oil. And just put a few drops of uh, walnut oil on it. And then just let whatever beeswax is in the rag polish it up. When you got a good coat on, crank the speed up and add some heat. So 
So, what do we think? A little handle, not too much time. Let's chop it off. I'll just polish the end with the wax to clean it up and then we'll attach it. And remember those little nubs you can just take off with your skew. Just kind of shave them down. The sandpaper will take care of the rest. Could have been better, but just a test piece. So we probably ought to scuff up this aluminum pretty good. And when you're scuffing up for adhesion, always go sideways. Don't go up and down. Going up and down won't do anything. You want it to have ridges coming down so it's not going to pull out of the hole. So for this one, I'm just going to use some CA glue on the inside, some super glue. Put a good amount in there. Then let's seat it in. Need something pounded down. Well, there we go. Fully seated in, so don't see any purple. I will say this, uh, when you use these things that very first time you really do it, it really does give kind of a tingly sensation coming through, but after about 20, 30 seconds, it's kind of, it's a good scratchy feel around your head. But there's nothing like that first time, and that first time tingle is what got me kind of excited about trying this, because I really could see somebody coming over there and trying it on themselves or their wife or their kid the first time, you know, they get the sh shivers going down their back and then wanting to grab two or three for to give out as, you know, white elephant gifts or something for the nieces and nephews. And it's something that you could do the same if you're not wanting to go out to markets and sell this kind of stuff. So I'm gonna batch out another six handles and let's see how the whole setup would look at my workbench. So there we go. What do you think? Just Something you can batch these out, no big deal. Uh, did a little texture on one of these. I left this one a little square and turned into it so it's a little bit more like a knob. This is kind of a traditional uh, design for me for a lot of stuff I do. We got the handle we did in the video earlier, just a little knob, something like there, then just a curved shape. Hopefully none of them look too phallic, but this is probably how I would display them in my show because they kind of condense together. It shows a bunch of different species, a bunch of different shapes. People can pick and choose. And then because these kind of fold up pretty small, you know, I can keep a bunch of them in like a tube or something like that. Or like they, they had these held in their box, this box right here, to keep a bunch of back stock underneath my tables to replace what sells. So what do you think? Is it a good idea? three dollars for the steel maybe you say you have a buck in wood from scrap material or whatever you out there and if you're slow 10 minutes of labor what would you charge for it leave that down in the comments below i hope you learned a few tricks thought about new ideas but in the end remember it's always worth the effort to learn stuff create new things share them with others y'all be safe and have fun